Hey guys, Noe here for Adafruit, and today we're gonna to take a look at the other mill from the other machine company. The other mill is a desktop 3D CNC machine that lets you mill all sorts of materials such as metal, wood, and plastics. And it does it with some really high precision and some pretty fine details. So we picked one up specifically so we could custom mill some prototypes of a gamepad PCB for our upcoming PyGirl Zero project. And if you've ever designed a PCB before, you probably already know how awesome it is to be able to prototype your stuff before having to send them off to a fab lab and having to wait weeks to get them back. But the other mill isn't just for making custom PCBs. It can also do medium scale projects like say you want to do some jewelry, some project enclosures, plates, signs, and probably a whole lot of other things that I just haven't thought of yet. We're thinking about using it for making aluminum propellers for our 2016 Droney trophies and probably some bezels and some face plates for an upcoming Star Trek communicator project. Spock? Spock? Okay, so now let's take a look at the milling process. The other mill makes it pretty easy to operate with their software, Other Planner, and it takes the nuances of G-code and complicated settings and it makes it really easy to operate. There's two main things to set up, and that's drill bits and materials. These have built-in presets that make it pretty easy to set up, and it makes the process simple. The other mill comes with two drill bits and a Hello World kit, which includes a couple of sheets of FR1 boards. There's also an easy to follow guide that helped me sort of get the workflow down and understand the machine's behaviors. Installing drill bits is pretty easy and straightforward, and I really like how the enclosure has these built-in magnets on top of the machine so you can put away your tools. And this helps you so you don't lose them since you tend to switch out bits frequently. There's procedures built into the tool change setup that prevents you from installing it incorrectly, and it sort of guides you through the whole thing. So the Axis sees home and auto locates the tool so that it always knows where it is so it doesn't crash into the spoiler plate. And bonus, no bed leveling required. So the folks over at the other machine company released a little fan bit that sort of blows dust away while it's cutting your part, and it's designed to be milled on the other mill. Coincidentally, we went ahead and made one for 3D printing, which is also equally as functional. To load materials, there's a load option that positions the bed in the right spot, and material presets are pre-configured to the stuff that the company sells in the shop. You can, of course, also set custom stuff, and to secure the actual material, you just use double stick tape to get it on the bed and you can square it up to the lower left corner. Loading designs is done by choosing from a few different file formats. You have SVGs for graphics, logos, and text, Eagle CAD board files for PCBs, and .NC for G-code that's produced from stuff like Fusion 360. So no STLs or objects here, but you can insert multiple files and even mix them up if you'd like. Each file can be repositioned almost anywhere on the material. You can place things on top of each other, which is pretty cool. Each object can have multiple drill bits or tools assigned to them and other planner will automatically figure out the tool path optimized for a specific drill bit. Detailed things deserve a thinner bit and large areas will call for a thicker tool. Now depending what file format you choose, other planner can let you set the depth for etching. SVGs can have a custom depth, but things like board files and G-code are going to need to be set in their appropriate apps. To start the cut, you can either choose to cut individual files or everything that's visible on the material. And this is handy because sometimes you just want to make one piece or just print everything that's on the material. Okay, so once everything is ready and set to cut, the machine quickly gets to work. And how long it takes depends entirely on the object, but I do find that it's a little bit faster than 3D printing because you're doing mostly cuts and etches. And the more you have to cut and etch, obviously that increases the time. But that's one thing that uh, I think other mill is sort of missing, an estimated time and total time that it takes to cut a job. It's sort of up to you to sort of time that if you need to know. Now while it's cutting, it can be obviously pretty loud, louder than the 3D printer, but it's not terribly loud and it's pretty fun to watch. It can be quite messy and dusty, even though all the sides are enclosed with these acrylic panels, dust can build up and sort of seep through some of these openings. I found that a, a couple pieces of packaging tape will keep the dust inside. And vacuuming is a must. Try to get one with a small attachment for getting into those nooks and crannies. After cutting is done, you'll need to use a spatula to remove your part from the bed, and it's a lot like a 3D print. You do have to be careful not to damage your part. The part can be potentially chipped or bent, so a little finesse goes a long way. If burrs are visible in the cut, a piece of Scotch-Brite or even a bushing wheel for a Dremel tool will help you remove these. And that's pretty much the whole process in a nutshell. So is this better than 3D printing? 
Well, that sort of depends on the project. I do think the other mill complements 3D printing in many ways. It can make some really fine quality elements for adding to your 3D printed projects, and it can make them look more polished and even more functional. But that's it for this one, folks. Thank you guys for watching, and be sure to subscribe for daily videos from Adafruit. I'll see you guys in the next one, but remember to keep on making, milling, and printing, and all that good stuff. Bye, guys.